Welcome to a very special live edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have our guest on the show today. They are currently in uh, Nova Scotia, and they are hopefully running for the Green Party of Canada's leadership in the upcoming leadership race that is starting here at the end of August, the deadline to apply to start the process of becoming a potential candidate ends today. Today, August 5th, 2020, and I'm pleased to welcome Jen Kang to the show. Jen, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure. 2022, we're doing this again. <laughs> exactly. Maybe, hopefully this will last a little bit longer, but here we are in 2022. Mm-hmm. So Jen, mm-hmm. uh, as a pers- as someone who is hopefully looking at running for the leadership, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question I've asked every single political candidate uh, who's come onto this show, and you're no exception. And that question is, Jen, where does your sense of duty to serve come from? Oh, that's a good question. Right out the gate. (laughs) That's interesting. I would say it comes from a variety of places. I think it comes from the people I associate with. It comes from the education I received. Uh, We had a requirement in my high school to do, it was either 60 or 90 hours of community service in order to graduate. So it was it was mandatory to, uh, and I actually received the award in high school for uh, Amare Sefir, the uh, the Latin award to love and to serve uh, for going above and beyond. And I just have never stopped. So it comes from seeing injustice and getting infuriated by it. It comes from, why are you crying? This is mischief. Uh, it comes from, she's a rescue from Texas. She's overcome mange. It comes from just caring. It just comes from caring. It comes from my my main motto of doing what I can with what I have where I am. And so that's that's what I'm going to try to do. And this is the biggest scale in which I've ever tried. So this is nationwide. This is huge. Um, so and before we so talk, yeah, that, before we start. talk about the leadership race and your potential entrance into it, I want to get to know the person behind the persona, because uh, that's what the show's all about. It's not about it. Sometimes it's about policy and the future and all that, but it's also about getting to know the person who is running for these positions. And I, I got to ask, where does politics come from for you? Like, was politics always something that was always uh, interest of yours? Was it talked at the dinner table around the dinner table with your family? Or where did the, the, the desire to get involved in politics? Because you can give back in many different ways, but you've chosen politics. Yes, and I've questioned that choice a few times along the way. Um, (laughs) I'll be honest with you, and I'll always be honest with you, and that was what I promised in 2017, the first time I ran provincially. I ran in East Hans, which you might not be familiar with either, and uh, and that video from the end of our debates is still up on YouTube, uh, the East Hans debate, and I actually used vows from my wedding ceremonies. I'm an event celebrant, and I said things like, I promise to help you when you need it and to step aside when you don't. You know, I'll respect and honor you always. I will love you for all of my life. And and to be honest, because that's that's something that a lot of politicians don't do. Um, so it's one of those, a lot of people are cynical or skeptical about changing a system from the inside. But I, I tend to not get inside of systems so much as flail around on the outskirts. And uh, and the personal has kind of always been political. Um, and, and I know that's a, that's a catchphrase, but it's true when there are countries in which my marriage would not be recognized legally, when I would be persecuted or imprisoned, when, yeah, when as a, and I'm a very light skinned person of color, but I am a person of color and I recognize the privilege is inherent. And so I've spent a lot of time figuring myself out, figuring out the world in which we live, being, uh, a first generation Canadian. And so rec- learning about what being Canadian means, learning about, you know, my parents and where my mom's from Colombia and my dad's from India. So learning about that um, and and having disagreements, you know, as a teenager, I learned about all sorts of things. And then, you know, I was honestly surprised the first time that I ran politically. I thought my dad was going to be upset with me and he was proud. I was like, oh, OK. All right, then. And I don't know how any member of my family votes. I uh, it's it's kind of a, a thing that we don't discuss. They know how I feel about a number of things. They obviously know which party I run for. But uh, but yeah, and, and they've never had an opportunity to vote for me. And I honestly don't know whether or not they'll become members in order to vote for me or not. That's their own personal freedom. But they've supported me. They bought this house. They've supported me in so many ways that that really, really matter. And I would not be here. I would not have capacity to be here if it was not for them. So I'm, I'm just immensely grateful. And that also answers some of where 
you know, where where my drive to serve comes from, because they're both part of huge families and they do a lot of caregiving and a lot of giving back. Where does the where does the entrance of the Green Party of Canada and the Green Party uh, uh, policies and politics come from uh, come uh, come into your life? Is it relatively early on or did you come late in 2017? Was that the first introduction? You said, you know what, the Green Party of Nova Scotia is where I want to run. So that's why I'm going to run there. Uh, I ran for uh, social student council president at my university. Um, I ran to be the mayor of the County of Kings. Um, I, pardon me, I was wearing, uh, a, a, a PJ set, I think in 1986 that had a hot earth on it that talked about climate change and the ozone layer. And thankfully a number of people, including Elizabeth May did a lot of hard work to get, uh, the fluorocarbons out of our atmosphere and to make change. Um, I did one of those vote compass quizzes. Um, I'm not sure what year it was, but I did one of those quizzes and I'm like, oh, 98% green. And I mean, even in university before I was, I wouldn't say before I was voting age, I got in it, I got in at about 18. Um, yeah, I already had the nickname Envirogen. It's always just, I was the president of the, uh, of the university environmental committee. So it's always just been who I am and I've considered running with other parties. And I looked into it, but there, the, the partisanship runs deep. If you join the provincial NDP, they automatically consider you a member of the federal NDP. You're not allowed to do both. And I tried to join the Conservative Party to have a vote in one of their highly contested leadership races. And then they informed me that I would need to invalidate my Green Party membership and not have to. Uh, so then they ended up just sending me my money back and not letting me vote. So there's a lot of lack of collaboration and there's a lot of heavy partisanship. I might run independent in the future, um, but Green, the Green Party is not whipped. Um, Nate Erskine, one of the liberals who's considered the most like, you know, out there uh, politician for not being, you know, adhering to party lines, still adheres to party lines 96% of the time. And I mean, A, that could mean that he's a good fit or B, that means, you know, when he dissents, he really, really, really knows he's sticking his neck on the line. So like, I admire him, but I think we can do a whole lot better. And I've told every constituency that I've ever run to represent that if you vote for me, I will be representing everybody who didn't as well like i love simply voting i love the process of part i love participatory democracy and so there's no reason with the online world now and all of the opportunities that we have to to not increase voter uh participation and say hey this policy is coming up for approval how does everybody feel and maybe everybody won't participate but the people who do participate will give me a really good sense of where everybody's at because an elected representative is exact that an elected representative you know we, we don't really need to know that much about me we just need to know that i'm going to represent the people in the party and the things that they want and it's imperfect you can't represent everybody if you want everybody to love you make ice cream sell ice cream don't be a politician whoa but, whoa, whoa. You know, and, unless you you're want... selling just vanilla ice cream and then if i want chocolate ice cream there's always there's always political debate on everything jen come on you know that <laughs> You should go to the real scoop in Wolfville. They have handmade ice creams and they have mix-ins and there's just a plethora of choice. There's a world of choice. You know, there's 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 an ice cream out there for everybody. And I think there's a politician out there for everybody. And I think I might finally be the politician out there for somebody who has never seen themselves represented on a screen of any size before. When I ran in East Kent in 2017, they hadn't had a green voice there in eight years. So in two provincial elections. And so part of the courage for running was telling myself, OK, I need to be better than nothing. That's a bar that I can leave. <laughs> you know, I want to give people the choice. And over 400 people took that opportunity, you know, and, and a lot of them had never met me. We had a, a debate, which was excellent, because in this last uh, election I ran for West Hans, there was no leaders debate or uh, there. Yeah, there was no there was no uh, candidates debate um, because of the pandemic, which I understand. But we still had to collect the signatures in person, which I didn't understand. There's a lot of digital analog. But and same thing with this race, the signatures need to be not digital, but then once they've been signed, you can scan them, photograph them, or fax them. So I'm not, and, and I mean, we were able to close on this house with digital signatures, so I, I don't fully understand the reasoning there, but I, I hope somebody will, will give me more information about it. I know in terms of online voting, there's a worry that if everybody votes online, somebody's landlord might say something like, you're going to vote this way, or you're, you're, you know, or you're out. There's, there's a potential for coercion that there isn't at an in-person voting booth, but in terms of signatures, yeah, I don't, I don't fully understand the disconnect there between a, a pen on paper versus, uh, yeah, a, a finger on a pad. 
you, you you've opened up Pandora's box, so let's play in Pandora's box here for a few minutes of the Green Party leadership. You have uh, announced that you are considering running for the leadership. Uh, the deadline to file your paperwork, your signatures, and your thousand dollar deposit is August fifth today. As we were recording this, midnight tonight, I think Eastern Standard Time. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jen. Um, but what's your decision based on? What's your decision to make? Oh. Yeah, to make this jump into federal politics and not just a splash in federal politics, a atomic bomb of uh, federal politics, because you're not just running for a nomination, you're running for the potential running for the leadership. So what was that decision based on? Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> okay, what do you mean by that? <laughs> my, my odds of being the Prime Minister of Canada currently are zero. But then they go up to something like one in five if I win. One in seven, maybe. Like, they, they increase exponentially. So, yeah. So what, what about it, though? What about the prime minister's job do you want, though? Because I think there's a lot of people who would say, I'm doing it because of this policy or this policy. But you're, you're being blunt, and I like that about you. <laughs> because you're being blunt, and you're saying, because I want to be prime minister. So what about being prime minister intrigues you? And how does a prime minister Kang work Ooh. for world peace okay how does that start because yeah cool. because right now we're in a very politically politically divided time conservatives won't talk to liberals liberals won't talk to conservatives ndp don't talk to anyone greens are in uh leadership race so they're focusing on that right now how do we get to world peace before not getting to canada peace <laughs> So we start by changing some of those rules. So with the permission, of course, of all of the membership of the Green Party of Canada, if it is the party's will, changing some of those rules that prevent across the aisle collaboration, that stop us from networking, that, that say, oh, you shouldn't have said nice things about Nate. He's in a different color than we are. He's on a different team. You know, we're all playing the same sport here. If somebody has a good idea, they have a good idea. Uh, Rob Balthuson from the Conservative Party had lots of great ideas when I was running provincially. And so I quoted him to the point where people were concerned that I was supportive. I was like, I, you know, I, I was I, I'd like to make some videos once I'm allowed to, to do campaign spending um, and say things like, hello, fellow conservatives. That's right. I love conservation. You know, I, I believe that to cherish what remains of the earth and to foster its renewal is our only legitimate hope for survival. Like, hello, fellow liberals. I'm very liberal. Hello, fellow Democrats. I'm very democratic. Hello, fellow progressives. That's what I aim to be. Like, those labels have become just convoluted. And there's so many parties in other countries and in ours who use words and who use labels that don't mean the dictionary definition, don't mean anything even close to what you would think that word meant if you, if you, you know, saw it isolated. It's like I saw on a TV tangerine raptors basketball and not being a huge sports fan i was like those are words yep and then i grew up in toronto so i understood that raptors basketball was a toronto raptors it turns out tangerine is a bank but it's like okay color dinosaur sports equipment you know like a lot of those labels have come to mean yeah <laughs> just ridiculous things and so for people out of context you can't just say i'm conservative and expect everybody to know what that means the same way you can't just say i'm christian or i'm muslim or i'm green or i'm left or i'm right there's been a lot of just assumptions made about people and i'd like to just subvert those expectations have conversations with people i might get criticized for the people that i follow and converse with on twitter on facebook on instagram but i think the silos are more dangerous honestly i've been part of the nonprofit sector for a really long time and networking is key you never know who has a cool idea somewhere else in the world and you know being a homesteader we go on the internet and we're like all right what do pot belly pigs need to eat to be healthy and happy you know, it's not, we don't all exist in a vacuum. Other people are out there, have been doing these things for a really long time. You know, there's a really great book I read and it said things like, be friends with older people. They know cool stuff you don't. Be friends with younger people. They know cool stuff you don't. And uh, my, uh, sorry if you can overhear that. My, my neighbor across the way has been going through some domestic troubles. So there may be some yelling. Okay. Oh, I can't hear it. So it's all good. Um, I, I'm glad all you good. said that. that I'm, not great, but. I, I'm glad you said that because... On this show, we've always prided ourselves on talking to everyone and not just the like the liberals and the conservatives and the NDP, but we'll talk to the Christian Heritage Party. We'll talk to the PPC because you know what? At the end of the day, we put all we all put our pants on the exact same way. And I, I apologize for getting a little bit rude here, but we all wipe our butts the same way after we go to the washroom. So we No, we don't. Okay, so okay, some of us don't, but 
we 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 all okay we all bleed red right we're all canadians at the end of the day from coast to coast to coast we are like we are under this one great country while it has its flaws and i will agree that it has its flaws we are trying to make it a better place for not just me not just for you but for everyone and if we're not talking to people then we're not doing canada a service but we're not also doing ourselves a service so I applaud you for saying that, but I want to go back to a statement that you just said that was a little bit uh, of a, a antenna up on my end was we don't know what conservative means because everyone's definition is going to be different, whether you go talk to someone in Nova Scotia or Alberta. But it's the same that goes for Green Party of Canada as well. What oh, does the yeah, Green Party, uh, what does the Green Party of Canada mean or what does green policies mean? So for Jen Kang. What does being green mean? Mm, it means freedom. What, how so? Like just freedom from everything or not everything? It just that's a very open ended uh, answer there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's freedom to uh, listen, freedom to be a representative and be a leader, but not need to be a leader of personality to not need to be a leader with a big ego. It's freedom to, uh, you know, one of the recent slogans was we do politics differently. And, you know, it's the freedom to be different. I've always been different and I've been punished for it frequently. And so this is the freedom to try something that hasn't been tried. You know, I'm, I'm part of educators for social justice and we're working diligently to eradicate child poverty in Nova Scotia and ideally everywhere. Um, and somebody asked the question, well, which party would ever be for child poverty? This seems like a no brainer. And then my friend Cole, who's amazing said, well, historically up until now, all of them. Um, and the greens are the only ones who haven't been given that chance to fully govern. So, you know, it's a chance to prove what would be different. It's a, it's a high bar, but it's a, it's an amazing opportunity. And, uh, yeah, what it means to me. I mean, it means it means so many different things. I mean, green, it's again, it's a very it's a very broad word. You know, it's a beautiful color. It's the color of plants. It's the color of nature. It's the color of uh, an ecosystem that humans do not know how to recreate. We don't know how to make a forest. We've been here for a really long time. We've done a lot of damage. We don't know how to fix it. You know, we have ideas. We've got, you know, monoculture is not the best way. We know this. But uh, but, yeah, no, it's the it's the opportunity to to be free and, and just to, to, to cycle back. I, I wasn't in, uh, intentionally antagonizing you. I just know a lot of friends with disabilities. So they put on their pants in really creative ways and they get their butts wiped in really, you know, varied ways, depending on the person and, and the care that they need. All that just to, to say what we've been saying, that there's no broad stroke that covers everybody. But if we provide everybody clean drinking water and regular internet access and safe shelter, and even, you know, I say this often, if we treated every situation such that autistic people feel welcomed and comfortable it tends to benefit everybody i i, so, I think i thank you for yeah. challenge me on that statement because i i didn't think of it a certain different way right and when i have guests on and they challenge me it makes me a better interviewer but it also makes me a better person because then i can notice notice <laughs> where i'm falling down and i am being ableist or and i i don't want to ever do that because i want to make sure everyone feels included on the show and everyone feels like they have a safe space to come on the show and talk so i thank you for pushing back on me a little bit there and when you did i was like what do you mean and then when you just said that i was like oh i didn't put two and two together there because i i i, I you never think outside the box until the box is open for you and then you think oh that's how you actually should be thinking so thank you so much for that and i you're welcome. I live outside the box to the point where actually my uh, my my materials are going to be. I'm very proud of this. My materials, rather than when during the last race when when Green Party candidates, leadership candidates were sending out very glossy postcards and you know brochures. I was thinking this is not this is not what I what we wanted. We didn't want to kill more trees. I've got uh, my used boxes of minute rice of cereal of whatever I happen to have a thin card stuck and I've got a stamper that's going on the back of those. So I'm an outside the box thinker who's using the inside of the box to uh to spread my uh to spread my message and i and i didn't i didn't think your intention was ableist i just know that if you're not living your day-to-day -day, and even people who have full use of their two legs might get into their pants in a challenge mode by taking them and jumping into them like a jump rope like we don't know how other people live like i know lots of people who sit down to pee even if they have a penis and you know a lot of them have been shamed for doing that but if it's more comfortable and it means you don't get urine on your pants then you know then what's the harm in that uh 
I am enjoying this conversation already, Jen. Like, this has been a fantastic <laughs> even 20 minutes into this. And I'm like, you know what? I'm liking Jen. I'm her new best friend out in Calgary, Alberta. Um, there. <laughs> Their new best friend, but yeah. Their new best friend. Sorry, sorry. I apologize for that. Uh, It's lifelong learning. It happens. We're humans. Exactly. I want to turn to sort of a touchy subject because I always throw in the one touchy subject throughout this uh, interview. Oh, we are moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're heading towards the electricity. Okay. 10% uh, A warning light. Okay. I will okay. wait two seconds to so yeah. let you sit down good? and plug in. Um, I want to ask yeah. the question about the Green Party of Canada. It's yeah. no secret what happened in the last election with the last leader. There are reports after reports and conflict after conflict. And there are times when we're sitting here going, OK, who would want to take on this challenge of trying to unify the party after the last? Exactly. And we're going to get to the question, but <laughs> who would want to take on the challenge of uh, unifying the party after what we saw with former leader, Annamie Paul? Um, what makes you think you can unify the party more than she was trying to? I have lived a bunch of privileges, like I said, being like a light skinned person of color, being a person with chronic illness, but who's capable of a lot of things. Like when I went to go get my uh, mental health diagnoses, they were like, but you're so functional. And I was like, oh, good. Punish me for all of my coping strategies and tools I've learned along the way. Great. Um, I commend Anime for the work she did. She described it as crushing the glass ceiling and then being forced to crawl on hands and knees on the broken glass, which paints quite the visual for the racism, the misogyny, the difficulties, the infighting that she faced. Um, and then Amita Kuttner, whose pin I am wearing, um, <sighs> took over, which is amazing. As interim leader, they have been incredible. And there was a teeny tiny part of me that, you know, the trailblazer part that was like, oh, I won't be the first, you know, non-binary person. The first person, I, I'm actually not 100% certain that they identify as non-binary. I think they identify as transgender. And, and non-binary falls under the transgender umbrella, but it's not necessarily a label I use actively for myself because I'm sort of outside of gender. I, I, could, I could consider it transcending gender. If transgender is short for transcending gender, then sure. But that's a, that's a digression. But, you know, to be the second person you know, of Asian descent to be the second person who uses they, them pronouns, it gets that much easier. And that's the idea. And, and see Alexandria Ocampo, um, C, the C stands for something. I've forgotten. Cortez. AOC. It's always AOC. Thank you. I think it's Cortez, uh, as a, as a Latinx person, which, you know, I also 50% am. And then to see these people doing it and see, and honestly, Mindy Kaling's biography, why not me? Like, why not me? And, you know, I, I have long time said that the Houses of Parliament could use a could use a kindergarten teacher. They've got a speaker. They need a kindergarten teacher. They need somebody to say, excuse me, no. Hey, shoosh, you know, scoot. You might are you talking about the member of Parliament or are you talking about the dog there? <laughs> because it was just uh, perfect I mean, timing they, there. <laughs> oh, I know. This is, this is, they've got better manners, honestly, sometimes than some of the interactions I've seen on TV. And so like when I ran for mayor of the County of Kings, I, I made a, a, an image that said, you get to speak again when you can do so with kindness, compassion, and patience. And that includes everyone, including themselves. The amount of negative self-talk that people give themselves, especially neurodivergent people who are forced to fit in a neurotypical world, it's insane. And the word insane is, you know, it's, it's, it's losing a lot of its stigma, but like as someone who's been in the psych ward, it still carries some stigma. There's, there's words that you can reclaim and there's words that are still, you know, that are still ouchy. Um, I like, I, I've forgotten the band's name, but there's this song and it goes north, south, east and west. Let's get this party moving. And it's adorable and it's a children's song. And it's also a great warm up to a meeting or a convention. And I'm not afraid to be ridiculous. And uh, as, a, as an ex once told me, I didn't, I wasn't concerned about skeletons in my closet because they're not in my closet. I dress them up in costumes and I dance them around the living room. Like, you know, if you, you ask if there's any subjects that are off limits and there aren't, you know, if somebody's like, you did this, I'd be like, yes, and? And I might have my own explanation, but it's not even necessarily defense. I might say, yes, that's accurate. So, and I, it might exclude me. You know, I might not even, I might not even pass vetting. There are all sorts of checks that are going to happen. August 5th is today, and that's the application deadline. But, but between August 5th and August 31st, I think even some of it's August 25th, there's a credit bureau check. There's criminal record checks. There's 
uh, English and French proficiency language checks. There's there's a lot of hoops to still jump through, but I figured I'd give it a go. I'd see, I figured I'd give it a try and, and see what's possible, see what's out there, see what people think, see what gaps are there, see how the other candidates do. And uh, and yeah, just just learn and grow from it. The one thing that a lot of people have been making hay over for the last few weeks since the rules and uh, timeline of this race came out was the French and English proficiency test. Uh, they hearken back to when Elizabeth May was first leader of the Green Party of Canada saying she wasn't fluently bilingual in uh, French and English. She was an English, she's an Anglophone, but she wasn't fluent in French. She did learn it throughout her time as leader. Um, but this is a larger hill to climb on. Um, do you think this will stop some candidates from even potentially entering the race or even filing their paperwork to see if they could even pass this uh, portion of the uh, vetting process before you're even a named candidate? It could. It could, absolutely. Like Naomi Howard from Saskatchewan uh, spoke in an article that was published saying that, uh, yeah, that Elizabeth at the time might not have even managed. And Elizabeth is reportedly running this time. So, I mean, now she will. You know, now she can do it. Um, and she would also make a great prime minister. Uh, Naomi Hunter, right? Hunter, thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was just like, I've had her on the show. Did I say the last name wrong the entire episode? Oh, and God. see, I'm not, the, I'm not the greatest for names. I think I'm confusing it with the person who wrote Courtney no Howard, Bogo, which my high school, who's that? Courtney Howard, who ran for the leadership in 2020 against uh, Anime Paul. She was the no, doctor from the doctor from the Yukon. No, yeah. I'm thinking of the person who wrote the book. No logo. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, it's all there's a lot of there's a lot of names floating around in my brain. Thank you for thank you for correcting me. No, no. Yeah. Hey, that's we learn. Um, See? my my. My next set of questions is about policy. And it's not about policy, but what would a leadership like look like under uh, Jen Kang? And I want to know, what's the one thing that, the first thing that you look at when you see the Green Party of Canada, what would you want changed to make it a more freedom party, a more welcoming party for different views? Ooh... What would be the first thing that I want changed? That's a very big question. Or what would you work towards? Um, I, because change doesn't happen I mean, overnight. The, what would you work on? Oh, goodness, no. Yeah, so so it's uh, Robert Fulgham is an author, and he's one of my inspirations. And he asked to lead the Ninth Symphony, the Ode to Joy. And when he was doing that... Um, the conductor, the regular conductor said, you have a really confident command of the score. And he said, oh, I'm not looking at the score. When the section is ready to come in, they raise their instruments and they look at me. And so I just say, come on in. Um, the benefit of being the representative of a grassroots party is that I don't need to come up with everything. I just look around and go, all right, what does everybody want? And what hasn't happened yet? And why hasn't it happened? Why did Anime, you know, encounter? I mean, I think that probably honestly has to be the biggest one who is, in, you know, if one person says they encountered racism, that's a problem. Where's the, you know, where's the problem? Who's being racist? How do we solve that? Uh, is it education? Is it expulsion? Is it, you know, I much prefer calling someone in to calling someone out. The expulsion of uh, Alex Terrell from leadership races, you know, is concerning. I don't agree with him on a number of views, but that's not the point. The point is, is this the right process or should the voters have been given the chance to decide um, who they want to represent them. And if they didn't want someone like Alex representing them for whatever reason, that's up to them and not up to the federal council. So, yeah. I mean, my, my two main mottos are, uh, can we all go? That's my favorite hashtag, can we all go? That started out for people with larger bodies being like, will I fit in the booth at this restaurant? It's going to be really embarrassing if I go all the way there. Like, And so people were advocating for each other, informing one another. It's extended to accessibility, you know, so that people have started putting on their posters for their events. There is a ramp or there are two stairs or the bathrooms are down, you know, this hallway, but there's an elevator, you know, to, to share that information. So the two the two main ones are can we all go? And the second one is to change it so that free for all is no longer synonymous with frenzy. We have that in the form of public libraries. We used to have that in the form of our healthcare system, which is becoming increasingly multi-tiered and increasingly privatized and increasingly strained. You know, the idea that Anything that you need that's a basic need, that anything that you need to live should not only not be taxed, should not have any charge at all. And I reckon 
recognize that the Green Party is one of the smaller parties. So, you know, the limits on my power will be there and I'm not out there to be, you know, a world dominator or a tyrant. But like I said, I want to do what I can with what I have where I am and being the leader of a nationally recognized party significantly ups my capacity from being a person wearing a unicorn horn on a porch. We we talked about political divide. We talked about the left versus the right divide, the conservatives versus uh, uh, liberals, the Greens versus the NDP, so on and so forth. But the one thing we haven't talked about, and this is where the next policy is going to come into play, is the provincial divide. The Alberta versus Quebec, the Ontario versus Alberta, the, the BC versus everyone. Uh, it seems like while we can talk about political divide, we have to talk about the country divide as well and we break ourselves down into provinces how does a unifier like yourself talking about freedom balance the needs and wants of different parties when it comes to provincial issues whether it be alberta saying we want to get our uh, natural resources to pipe uh, to market or whether it be uh Ontario talking about the need for more manufacturing and we need to focus on that instead of uh, oil and gas or whether it be out in uh, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, the small nuclear reactors. How do you balance the needs of what the provincial party leaders want compared to the federal issue? Because you're a federal party and you have to listen to everyone as a grassroots party. How do you do that? I'm going to just, hey, do not eat fiberglass. Why on earth would you think that's a good idea? <laughs> the little one is still a puppy. There we go. I have removed that from the, uh, <laughs> from our grass. So um, one of my favorite quotes is, and I'm probably going to mispronounce it, Arundhati Roy, another world's not only possible on a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. It's to provide an alternative. I mean, at the end of the day, people don't want you know, it's well. Here, I'll, I'll start with where I was raised. I was I was born in, and raised in the Durham region in Ontario. So I grew up in Pickering, which had a nuclear reactor. We did the potassium pill drills. We hid under the desks on a regular basis. I'm is from that, Clarington. That, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Old neighbors. And so, right, and see, and see things like that. All it takes is one tiny iota of connection, and we recognize we're not so different after all. And so, you know, we started out with the reactors, which are just now starting to get phased out. I remember learning in school that they're good for 25 years and I'm 39 now and they've been around my whole life. Um, so I'm like, this is, it's probably about time that we do so somebody's doing something about it. And I was in university in 2001 when they had their first windmill and that's running. And so change is possible. You know, adaptation is possible. Um, people don't necessarily want a pipeline so much as they want a guaranteed livelihood so much as they want their life to not get more complicated more expensive more divisive more troublesome you know and like it's there's there's a lot of possibility um there's a lot of people who are overworked and underpaid and underappreciated and if we do the things i was talking about eradicating child poverty getting everybody and, and I want to correct you earlier, you said we're all Canadians. We're not. We're people who live within the borders of Canada. And, and you said we have to divide by provinces. We don't. Those are things that, you know, colonists decided a very long time ago. The animals don't abide by the provincial borders. You know, the, the nations who were here before us didn't draw those lines. There's a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of ways that we don't. Yeah, I, I remember using the word citizens at one point during a provincial election and then you know, was informed, you know, by somebody else that there are a lot of people who are who are aiming for their permanent residency or who are, you know, for whom citizenship is a goal, but it's not something that they have and they still need to be taken care of, you know, here. And that's that's something that's also important to recognize. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of there's lots of differences. But I mean, I've lived in a number of different provinces. I grew up in Ontario. I spent seven years in Quebec. Um, I lived in Edmonston, New Brunswick, and then I moved to Nova Scotia for a while. I was joking about collecting every single driver's license along the way, but I love it here. I've stayed here. I I would like to think I'm no longer a come from away. I started out on Cape Breton Island. So like if, you know, and I'm, I'm at the point where I can now describe, this is kind of one of the telltales they say, if I can say it's over where the Zellers used to be. If you know where something used to be and no longer is, then, uh, then you've been here long enough. Yeah, capitalism has started to die and it's being replaced and that's great. <laughs> I would love to turn the Zellers actually in our area into a makerspace, just a massive, massive makerspace. We, we, we've we talked about uh, party unity. We've talked about Canada unity. We've talked about provincial issues. 
what is the like you talked about the reason why you wanted to get into this race is because you want to be prime minister which is a commendable approach of uh, this leadership race but we are in a very short timeline because the list of candidates will be announced at the end of this month and then you have two weeks to sell memberships and then voting begins basically like it is bam 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 thank you ma'am one week one week September 7th at midnight is the deadline. I thought it was September 12th. Oh, might be wrong. I apologize. So, okay. So you have one week to sell memberships. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you do it? Can you talk to uh, Canadians from coast to coast to coast? Can you talk to residents? Can you talk to the people, the voting members of the Green Party of Canada and say, come on board? Because I think there's a lot of pressure on the next leader to get it right. And there's a lot of pressure on this uh, leadership race to uh, do it in a quick timeline. Uh, are you the person to do it? We'll see. <laughs> it's part of why I'm starting. <laughs> it's part of why we're starting now. I mean, there's been some pressure, and that's why we're using the word hopeful and not the word candidate. And the joy is if I speak about myself, if I'm campaigning under my name, you know, Jen Kang, especially Jen Kang, they, them. There's a few other Jen Kangs, but I don't think there are any other Jen Kang, they, them. So if somebody Googles that. And even if it doesn't work for this, I'm capacity building. When I ran for mayor, I came in third out of three, um, but it cost me $200. And then my name went out on the ballot to every resident in Kings County. So if I ever do run Kings Hans, half of that's already taken care of. And I ran East Hans and I ran West Hans. So everybody in Kings Hans should ostensibly have heard my name. And if they haven't heard it yet, they're going to hear it now. And now people who don't even know what Hans is are going to learn about Kings Hans. Speaking of, I almost ran federally a good long time ago and uh, and thought, you know, maybe I could do it. You know, there's not going to be a focus. My photo might be on the TV for a, a split second. And then Morgan Wielden, who I actually hang out with sometimes at the Hans Foot Off Leash Dog Park, um, got just national attention, just got blasted for a Facebook comment that was something like three years old that he'd been made in regards to Israel and or Palestine. And, and that's how vague I don't necessarily need to be, but it's so sad that I've on purpose kept myself less informed because of all of the heat that people have come under. I will say I am opposed to genocide. That shouldn't be controversial to be opposed to genocide. The definitions of genocide will differ. I'm also opposed to murder. I've done prison ministry. I'm friends with murderers. I won't tell you who, but I am opposed to the act of murder. You know, meat is also murder and I eat meat, but I am opposed to the act of murder. Like these are, there's so many things and we try to draw so many lines. We try to make strict rules. People who use the words always and forever and never like the, in the domestic dispute that's happening over there. He said the words, you lied to me. You said forever. No one can promise you forever. That's not possible. We never know what's going on. And see, I just said never. We don't know. The only thing that's inevitable is change. Change is inevitable. Change is, you know, what happens and how we adapt to it now determines the future that we're going to live in. I have a, uh, I was working at a pyrotechnics uh, compound and I got a wire burst smoke grenade. And one of the videos I'm going to make once I'm allowed to spend that $13 on the smoke grenade and not just have it for personal use is to say that if we don't work on a green present now, this is the green future you will have and just mic drop the smoke grenade. (laughs) Because air quality is going to keep tanking. You know, there was a podcast that I listened to that said at the time it was 2020. And yeah, you could say 2020 was a bad year. And as we continued to live with the pandemic, we had to adjust. And this living with isn't actually living with. This is sacrificing people with immunocompromised conditions. This is just throwing them under the buses that we don't even have out here because we don't fund public transport well enough. So this is a, this is a, this is an ongoing issue. We've kept up things like this though, like Zoom and like, yeah, one reason to, to choose me as a leader for whatever group you want me to lead, I'm open. If I don't get this job, I'm looking for a job, everybody. <laughs> what would you like me to lead? Uh, but one of the things that I want to have is, uh, and I've lost my train of thought, there but uh whoops the, the adhd is strong with this one i uh i have an appointment for trying a seventh new medication it's a process but um but yeah i uh, i will be looking for a job and i'm open to leading things but i was talking about I mean, public transportation love public transportation you we, we talked about why you're running at the end of the day and it seems like and correct me if i'm wrong here jen because i never want to put words in someone else's mouth but you're running on the basis that you want to make the party the party it was, where it was free and 
weed out the negativity that the former leader saw. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong by saying that, because it seems like you're very down to earth when it comes to ideology and how you believe and what you believe in. Do you, and this this may be a controversial comment, and for those who are about to send me the negative comments, please send them to crossborderphotography at gmail.com. I'll file them in the appropriate location. Um, do you think someone like yourself would be taken serious? I hope not. Really? That's a very strange answer. I did not expect that answer because you <laughs> you you don't seem like the traditional politician, right? You don't seem like oh, someone no. who's going to stand there in front of a podium and be like, "Well, on 1912," and just you seem very outside the box. And maybe that's what Canada needs right now. Maybe that's what the Green Party needs is an outside the box candidate. And again, you're not a candidate yet. We are not t- talking about uh, the campaign. We're just talking about you as a person. Uh, you are ho- uh, you are an hopeful uh, prospective candidate. That seems like a very long winded uh, statement, but you you seem like such an out the outside the box politician. Do you think Canadians need that in twenty twenty two after the last two years that we've had? Yes, and I refound one of those threads. The podcast said you can say twenty twenty was a bad year if you accept that we're going to be twenty twenty or worse every year from now on if we don't make changes so yeah we need changes and you know if if what has been traditional hasn't been working why not give a shot to something new and and the reason why i said i hope not is because there's there's that lovely quote it's first they laugh at you no first they ignore you then they laugh at you then they fight you then you win if if i keep them at the laughing at me stage long enough they might not fight me i might just win true um, my last question for you here, because I'm just looking at the time and we're about 40 minutes and I don't want to oh, sure. keep you for the full day, but we probably could talk for the full day because it seems like you're very energetic and likes to talk. But I want to know what's next. So what do you have to do between now and the end of the month? Because you've, you're filing your paperwork, you're filing your thousand dollars, your signatures, I'm assuming you've collected because God bless the Green Party. And I, I, I say that with all respect to the Green Party here or uh, hope. The not Iron Man, the Green Party. I I, I don't want to make anyone sound like I, I, because I'm an atheist and I'm complete atheist and I just say God bless as in like the general term and not as in like oh I'm gonna go bring out the Bible now. Um, the Green it's Party still there for people taking oath. There's eagle feathers now. I'm hoping that I can swear oaths on my puppy. There we you can bring in our own sacred object. It's gonna be my dog. There you go. But the Green Party of Canada. Like they have unified in such a weird way because you don't see the the conservative party's membership going, "Hey, I'm with Team Charay. Come sign Scott Atchison's uh, nomination paper." Or, "Hey, I'm with Roman Babber. Come sign uh, Leslie Lewis's uh, nomination paper." But the Green Party, and maybe it's just Alberta. I'm not sure the other provinces, but they're like sending oh, out. Oh no, it's coast to coast. Okay, they're sending out a massive email saying, "Hey, I'm at 19." 19- 12th Street, uh, Southeast, come sign all 18 nomination f- papers. <laughs> that that speaks volumes of where the Green Party is in today's society, mm-hmm. doesn't it? That's one thing I would change. I tried having all of the names on one piece of paper so that the, that the party members wouldn't need to do as much. And I photographed them when they were blank to say, I'm not hoodwinking anybody. I'm not putting one name on, getting everybody signed, and then adding a whole bunch of other names in. I had all of the names in at the start, uh, but that was not accepted. We had to go back to doing, I needed to print out 18 sheets of paper for 18 different candidates and anybody who wanted to sign. I mean, I guess that gives you a bit more choice because if somebody had issue with one person, they might say, hmm, but they could have, you know, they could have made a little note except for, you know, Bob. I don't like Bob. Everybody but Bob. But yeah. Anna Keenan from PEI reached out to me before the contest happened, gave me a bit of a heads up about what rules she was aware of. Evelyn Tanaka in Alberta on Team Najib has been collecting signatures for me, and I collected some signatures for them. Um, I've been chatting with Sarah Gabriel Barron about collecting signatures. And yeah, I'm I'm still collecting signatures. It's good to have a healthy buffer uh, because it's a minimum of 100 and it's a minimum of 20 from outside of your region. And it's a minimum of 20 from Young Greens. uh, And the more the merrier. And what's next you ask me so yeah i don't i don't know what's next in terms of like i know what i need to do but 
you know, the, the way that I see my life is sort of a sound slider. There's a, uh, there's a, there's a whole quest of things. Like I started out the day intending to clean out the fridge and instead I made a mobile. Uh, so it's, uh, but I also ate food and I also, you know, prepared for this interview. I, I needed to make a bio as part of the application and it needed to be 350 words or less. And I did it in 44. So as a hyperverbal person, I'm very proud of myself. I'm going to post that to my Twitter and my Instagram and my everywhere else. I've been working on the balance because just because everything's possible through social media doesn't mean that's where I should live. You know, there's all the little keyboard warriors and there's only so much that we're actually doing when we're, when we're spouting off on our little platforms. So like not to, not to diminish your online presence, Chris or anyone else's, it's important. And that's how we get to know a lot of people is through the tiny little box we hold in our hands, but there's more to it than that. And it's been lovely. There is something to be said about meeting people in person and there is, and I wanted to just kind of link circle back to, Oh, I said circle back, uh, circle back to what you were saying. It's not a nostalgia. I think nostalgia is dangerous. I'm not trying to get the party back to anything. It was, I'm trying to get the party to what it could be, to what maybe nobody's even imagined as possible because I'm an outside the box thinker. And I offer creative problem solving skills for anybody who wants to hire me $1 a minute. I can do a whole lot in one minute. And if anybody doesn't want to support the Green Party of Canada, because a lot of people have lost hope and I don't want to force anybody to feel uncomfortable joining a party that they don't feel aligns with them. If you like me, but don't like the Green Party of Canada, you can, you can donate to my costs of living. You know, my teeth, my luxury bones, as we call them, are not included in Canada's health plans, in the provincial health plans. You know, my roof needs some replacing before I can put the solar panels on it. My email is J-E-N-N-K-A-N-G-5 at gmail.com. Any transfers can be sent there. And that's not campaigning. That's living. Uh, mutual aid has become a reality. People doing GoFundMes in order to survive has become a sad reality. People, you know, struggling using food banks on the regular basis, like the things that are supporting us these social safety nets are inadequate they're overburdened people are amazing people are helping but just because people help each other out in the concentration camps doesn't mean they should have had to live in the concentration camps just because you know people are not as bad off as they would be if we were all everybody fending for themselves doesn't mean it can't be so much better you know i i asked the question on my tiktok what would the world be like for you if your daily needs were met and people weren't even willing to dream that big. And, and people did dream that big a little bit in Sean Trainer's campaign in Truro provincially for the Greens. They talked about affordable housing. They talked about proportional representation. And then he didn't win. And then, you know, people didn't really know what to do next. So there's a lot of work to do with that in terms of what, yeah, what can be done when you're not the when you're not the ruling party because even if i become the leader of the green party of canada i don't automatically become the prime minister of canada some would say that it's just as impossible for me up there as it is for me down here you know and that's not an illegitimate complaint somebody complained online that they wouldn't trust the green party to manage a row of toilets let alone the country and that's a heavy criticism that paints a very vivid picture and that means we have a lot of work ahead and so I've become very good at managing toilets. I offer plumbing in my community. <laughs> Jen, I want to thank you so much for the last 45 minutes. This has been an honor and a pleasure to sit down with you. Um, come August 31st, we will have you back on as hopefully, uh, I say this as in like hopefully, as in because you are a hopeful candidate. Um candidate for the leadership of the Green Party of Canada. And even if you don't, uh, I would love to have you back on to talk about the field of candidates that are there, your opinions oh, on them. We would love always having yeah, people sure. from coast to coast to coast talk on the show. So, uh, Jen, I want to thank you for doing this. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, so for the for my listeners and my viewers, uh, I just want to let you know that the links to Jen's Facebook page, Twitter account, email address are all in the show notes. So if you're watching this now, scroll down and you can check it out. If you're listening to this at a later date, uh, just go in and you can uh, click on some of the links, follow, her, follow them Sorry, on social media. And then also the emails there if you want to reach out. Uh, uh, figure out how you can help Jen as well. But also, reminder that September 7th is the last day you can buy your membership for the Green Party of Canada to vote in the Green Party of Canada leadership race. So if you're thinking about buying First a member... 
first round. But I'm assuming you have to buy the first member. Yeah, the first round. So if you want to buy a vote in the first round, please get your membership. The link is also in the show notes. So scroll down. There will be a link there where you can purchase your membership now as well. So with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in, for listening today. Uh, we will be back for another live edition later next week. But with that, I want to thank everyone. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, get out from behind social media. Drop your phone for at least 10 minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our democracy. It helps our society. It makes us a better people. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking.